Welcome to our last lesson. Through this video lecture, you will learn about animations and discover how these can be used to make presentations more attractive for the audience. You will learn about the different types of animations and you will get acquainted with the different steps to create animations using Microsoft PowerPoint. Additionally, you will get some tips on how to use animations in a proper way based on the objectives you want to achieve and the scope of your presentation. If you are delivering an important lesson, you want to make sure learners are paying attention to you. Besides including all the relevant information and a good speech, you can add animations to your PowerPoint slides as a tool to engage the audience. Animations can help make a PowerPoint presentation more dynamic, make it easier to convey your message to the audience in a clear way and help to emphasize points. However, animations should be used very carefully as it is easy to go too far and overanimate the slides, thus reaching the effect of making the presentation distracting and disruptive to your students. If you are delivering an important lesson, you want to make sure learners are paying attention to you. Besides including all the relevant information and a good speech, you can add animations to your PowerPoint slides as a tool to engage the audience. Animations can help make a PowerPoint presentation more dynamic, make it easier to convey your message to the audience in a clear way and help to emphasize points. However, animations should be used very carefully as it is easy to go too far and overanimate the slides, thus reaching the effect of making the presentation distracting and disruptive to your students. Animation is a tool that allows the user to move an object within a slide. This object can be a text or an image. Microsoft PowerPoint has dozens of built-in animations that you can directly apply to your PPTs. Let's discover the four types of animations offered. Entrance animations make elements enter the slide. You should use them when you want new information or objects to show up within the slide. Exit animations make elements exit the slide. These animations determine how objects leave the slide. For example, an object could fade out of the screen. Emphasis animations. Animations to highlight elements on the slide and direct attention. You can use them to animate already displayed objects to have your audience focus on them. Motion path animations make elements on the slide move from one place to another along predefined paths. And how you can apply animations in your presentation. Here's how you can do it in Windows. Open the PowerPoint presentation that you want to edit and select a specific slide. Now, click on the object that you want to animate, select the Animations tab at the top menu bar, and click Add Animation. Here you'll see a list of all the available animations that you could apply to your project. You can also expand the menu by tapping the drop-down button to see more animations. Browse through the list and select the animation that you want to apply to the object. Keep in mind that the animation that you've selected will only be applied to a single object. Once you've applied the animation, tap the Animation Pane button. This will display a list of all the animations you've applied to your slides. Click the arrow next to the animation and tap Effect Options. This will open a new dialog box where you can easily customize the animation style. Save the project, click OK to save your changes and press Ctrl plus S to save the project. If you own a MacBook or iMac, these steps will help you add animations in PowerPoint presentations. First, Select the object, open the PowerPoint presentation and select the object on which you want to apply the animation. Then select the Animations tab. Select the Animations tab and tap the drop-down menu to explore all the available animations. After this click the desired animation. Click the desired animation to apply it to the selected object. An Animations pane, again, you'll see the Animations pane button at the top menu bar. Click on it and tap Effect Options. The last step. Adjust the animation speed. Here you can adjust the animation speed as well as its movement direction. Once you add an animation to an object, PowerPoint offers further options to customize the animation. Each animation effect can be controlled with additional settings. Let's check some functions. First, let's learn how to rename items on the slide. If you add a lot of pictures, icons, or text, it's easier to lose track of them, and you might have a hard time identifying the object that you want to animate. To avoid losing time, you should rename every object right after you insert it. To do it, select the Home tab. Then, head to the Editing menu and click Select, Selection Pane. To rename the object, double-click on its current name, and the name field will become editable. Secondly, let's learn how to adjust the animation timing and speed. The animation timing tools allow you to control when and how the animations play. To adjust the speed, select the object or text that you've animated. 
Then, in the Animations tab, open the Start menu and select the duration and when it should start. If you select with Previous, the animation will start at the same time as the previous animation. If you select After Previous, the animation will start right after the previous effect finishes. You can set a delay value to have a small break between effects. For better control, you should select the on click option. The general rule is to have faster animations. A timing of 0.5 seconds is slow enough to be noticeable, but fast enough to keep things moving. As you work on your presentation and add animations, you should constantly check how they look. There are two quick ways to check this. You'll notice that the slides with animations have a little star next to them. If you click the star icon, the animations will start playing. Additionally, you can go to the preview to view the animations on the selected slide. Once you've finished your presentation, press F5, watch the entire slideshow, and observe the animation's pace. Ask yourself these questions. How does the pacing feel? Are there sections in my presentation where there's too much animation? Too little? How does the timing feel? Reviewing your presentation is a final, yet essential check step which ensures you that animation effects are working exactly right. Here are some important tips to remember when animating the elements in your slides. Before you start working on your presentation, draw an outline of how it should look. Think about how your idea can reach your audience and how the different animation types will help you achieve your goal. Take a look at each slide and decide what your audience should focus on. An easy to remember guideline is the 80 20th rule. What 20% of the content in your presentation is the most important? When you choose an animation, make sure its strength matches the importance of each key point. You can use transitions or animations according to the context of the slide. If you'd like to surprise the audience with the whole slide, a transition could be ideal. If you'd only like to have a few elements appear at a time, use the animation. If you want to prepare a professional presentation, you don't need to animate everything as it might confuse the audience. If there are multiple elements that you want to animate, don't have them moving at the same time. Instead, give them some progression. Also, having too many transitional animations will distract your audience from the idea that you're trying to share. This is why you shouldn't use more than three animation types throughout your presentation. With these last tips, we close our video course. Thank you very much for watching this learning video. If you like it, you can continue following us on YouTube or our other channels, such as Facebook or the official website of the Project VideoTeach at videoteach.eu. All the content of this project has been produced through the international collaboration of nine expert partners and is funded by the European Union.